This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just this is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Ooh, nostalgia. Welcome to DBL. Many of you remember that iconic theme song to Little House on the Prairie. Can you believe it's been 50 years since the show first aired on TV? And now many of the, the cast, including Melissa Gilbert, Karen Grassley, who played Ma, and Allison Arngrim, who played Nellie, are reuniting for a three-day 50th anniversary festival in Simi Valley, where the show filmed. In fact, they recreated sets like the old schoolhouse, Olsen's Mercantile, and the Little House itself. Self, Melissa told GMA what it was like to work on the set with the late Michael Landon as a child actor. Watch. He was magnetic and he drew me in, but he also played with me right away. And our relationship immediately became like parental and in that way. But he treated us when he worked with us like contemporaries, mm -hmm. not like kids. This is a favorite. In fact, this show, when we were having our meeting, we always like to pull the curtain back. Um, a few of our producers, one in particular, I mean, it hits close to home. People love this. So why do you think that Little House in the Prairie strikes such a chord with so many people? I think people watched it for comfort. It reminds me of mac and cheese. You know what I mean? It's just very, um, you know the house, you know Olsen's mercantile. It goes back, and you, there's no big changes. And I think that's very comforting. This bucolic pastoral, you know, presence and set. But again, they would face real issues and, and t have large discussions about world issues that I thought were interesting. Just so you guys can see um, the people that, oh, do I have this card? Well, yes, I do. The cast now and then. Melissa Gilbert, let's take a look before uh, uh, now and then. There's Melissa. Okay. We got um, Allison Arngrim as Nellie. Yeah. Let's take a look. I interviewed oh, her yeah. for DBL. Right. And Karen Grassley as Ma. Okay. Good to see. Great. Yeah, I, I, I think with these shows, uh, what, whether it's this show or even a show like The Fresh Prince or The Brady Bunch, people like to see functional families. And I think we take for granted a lot of times that not everybody has that. Uh, the, the rapper J. Cole fa famously said that, you know, uh, Uncle Phil was his father. And that, that was the case for a lot of people. So I think when a lot of people see this family, either they see a family that they want to possibly live in or maybe create when they're older. So I think that's, that's why it resonates so much with people. Yeah. Erica, you're making a face. No, I'm not making, I don't, I, there's something that makes me really uncomfortable about this show. I don't know if it's like when it was on originally, like, it, it, there's a sadness there for me. I don't know what that's about. There's it triggers something in you. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I remember there being times where it was kind of like in the background. I remember certain things about it. Like um, I think there was an episode about how do you like to a black man? Like how yep. do you feel about um, people thinking this way about you or something like that? Yeah. And it's just like there's certain things that I just can't watch mm. because it just feels it feels sad mm -hmm. right like yeah. it doesn't feel good to me it wasn't comforting I, well, at all i think right. that, that's how we deal that's with those honest. times i mean if you think about how life on the prairie was what mash was about what, what war korean, were they in korean, the war. korean war you know how, that these things are set in terrible situations and i think it's the way that people made light to get through them and it's like it, pretty much any era in history was not good right. for the majority of people and like people get through it with humor, music, dance, family, food, clothing. So I think that that's, uh, that's what people resonate with. Well said. Okay, speaking of cast reunions, ooh, we are getting a first look at the new Beetlejuice movie. Winona Ryder is back with Jenna Ortega as her daughter. And of course, there she was, Catherine O'Hara. Take a look. The juice is loose. The original film. 
film came out in 1988 and also starred Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin, who are not back for the sequel. The new movie comes out in September. I cannot wait, Tori. Will it live up to the original? Yes, I think so. I think so, too. And but by, from reading what uh, behind the scenes, Michael Keaton said he's never had more fun on a set. Tim Burton and he have collaborated on a lot, including Batman. Um, Jenna Ortega, Michael Keaton says, has something very special in this movie. Um, seeing Winona back as Olivia, I mean, and then seeing uh, Catherine O'Hara, that brings back such vivid, vibrant memories. And this world Tim Burton created is so unique that we all remember it. And Harry Belafonte's yes. eerie, haunting Deo yep. coming through to bring you back is just Perfection. I can't wait. And don't forget, Tim Burton has a history also with Winona Ryder, of course. That's but also true. Jenna Ortega in Wednesday. He directed the Wednesday. Oh, oh is that right? right? Yes. So they all have a history together. So oh I think gosh. we're going to see their chemistry even more so now. Oh, this is fabulous. I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. Okay, this story is for you, Tori. Oh, great. Gwyneth Paltrow puts her taste buds to the test. On the latest episode of Hot Ones, Gwyneth ate up some spicy wings and revealed the Bill Clinton, that Bill Clinton slept through her movie, Emma, during a special screening at the White House. And despite starring in the Iron Man franchise, claimed there are only a few real superhero movies out there. But host Sean Evans was really impressed with Gwyneth's zen reaction to eating some of the more spicy wings. Take a look. And then this will be a, kind of a unique experience. Wow. Right. No, I get it. I get it. Right here with you. The, the violation is intense. <laughs> Kate, I'm liking Gwyneth I more I have a theory on this. What? It's just like, yes. Is a lot of stuff we see on Goop kind of silly? Yes. Yes. But she's done years and years of all these kinds of retreats where you learn to calm yourself and go in. And you could kind of see Erica when she took a bite it was very intense and whatever training she's been doing over the last Meditation. 20 years, she right. went somewhere in her head, processed the fact that this should not be in our body and then responded. I really do think that that's why she was able to handle it like that. True. I don't think she's a spicy wings eater or spicy no. anything eater. She doesn't eat anything. You know, she ate me. Yeah, no. that was my biggest thing. I thought she was like, yeah, because she had bone broth. Didn't yeah, she, she, she bon eats meat. Oh, she eats okay. bone broth and a little bit of hope. That's all she eats. Well, we don't no. know that. That's it. Does this no, make you like her more? You yes, think? this makes me like her more. Well, and you let just me admit you like her. No, but let me tell you something else I did that she liked. She had Sean Evans put on her goop products during this. So take a look. This is him wearing the goop products products as she ate the spicy wings. So look, I think she's playing into it. Do I think Goop is absolutely insane and absurd and out of everyone's price range out of except but for those the are the one. products to Al's point though. She does do a lot of retreats that helps you learn about Kundalini yoga and meditative practices, how to like be uh, instead of outward, you're more within like it reminds me when I gave childbirth, I used some of those practices. Absolutely. Really? My problem, oh yeah, I honed it in. You, I didn't scream. No, I honed it. You in. Honed. Wow. Yeah. My problem is when she suggests medical devices, then she She's not a doctor, but if you're honing, hone away, but hone away. Everybody does that. Joe Rogan pushes medical stuff on us. Everybody's like, this is for your brain, this is for your body. I don't know why you're so anti her. Okay, well, to me, in the beginning of Goop, she was trying to come off as an alternative doctor, and she wasn't, and she got sued many, many times, and I had an issue. So I said it, and I thought she was a little bit abstract and a little snobbish, and it became a thing. But you know what? Get There's a her. whole corner of the economy dedicated to alternative medicine. Great. It's she not was on the face. her. She was the face She's of it. She's the face of alternative of medicine? You want to ask Jade Eggs? Who do you think of? I don't think she invented those. She certainly sold them soon. A lot of, of people it. sell okay. things. We're under the All system right. of capitalism. All <laughs> right. Coming up on DBL. Wow. We are talking with <laughs> actor Ted McKinley. <laughs> All Jade about Eggs. his most well-known roles from Married with Children to Revenge of the Nerds. And Erica is breaking down the drama yeah, on the is. Real Housewives of Atlanta in her segment. What Erica's watching. <laughs> Um, eat, shoot, pee, eat, shoot. What's that um, book? What? Oh, um, it, commas matter. Have you seen that one? No. Eat, shoots, and leaves, but oh. you have to have the right comma in the right place. Shoots and then leaves. Right. What is um, it? 
I was saying it's important, like, what Erica's watching or what's Erica watching. It Please ma- explain to the people. Okay, so this basically... This has been a thing on DBL, and I'm almost kind of confused. Okay, so for instance, it's instead of what Erica's watching... No, that's right. It's what Erica's watching, not what's Erica watching. So for instance, there's a famous book called Let's Eat Grandma, and then underneath it goes, Let's Eat, comma, Grandma. <laughs> Punctuation saves lives. What's the most famous one ever from The Simpsons? You, if you don't know this, we are not family. Oh, no. Is with it when the, he writes on the board? No, the lawyer, the the shady lawyer with the car. Troy McClure? Yeah, no, no, he was what? the guy. Troy from McClure. I'm Troy no, McClure. No, it's the lawyer the that's got the car, and, and he got, and he, uh, he he said, uh, "Well, I thought I didn't have to pay you." It says on your card, "No money down." And then he takes the card and puts an apostrophe after "no." I mean, a comma. And he, it just says, "No money, money down." down. <laughs> you don't remember that? <laughs> it was such a great. <laughs> That's not it. Yeah, <laughs> The Simpsons is so good. Yeah, I was. Chris, is The Simpsons still on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know who wrote the monorail episode? My favorite one. Uh, yes, uh, the famous talk show host. Conan, Conan, Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. I, said, I almost said Colin O'Brien. <laughs>getting real shady over in Atlanta and another one of my favorite Bravo shows is making a comeback and why does an Abbott Elementary star have the streets talking in this week's what Erica's watching well Nene is heated about Portia reportedly refusing to work with her despite fans wanting them to return and reunite as real housewives Well, Nene was blindsided when she was informed that Portia refused to co-star with Nene when there seemed to be no lingering beef between them. Well, that was until Portia picked back up her peach. We don't have any issues that we can't work together. We are professionals. We get on set and we work together and do what we got to do. Your issues in the past, if you had to pick a housewife, it certainly wouldn't be with me. And now things are getting really messy and very juicy. Nene was spotted out on what appears to be a double date with Portia's estranged husband and his new side piece. Well, since Atlanta is heating up anyway, Portia, just let Bravo help us watch all of this new trauma unfold, honey. It's only gonna give your comeback higher ratings. Next, Summer House Martha's Vineyard is returning to Bravo. And if you missed how the melanin pop and cast came to the yard, last season's summer vacation drama included slides into DMs, a secret girlfriend, and skinny dipping in the hot tub in front of someone else's man. And although Silas and Jasmine getting it on like rabbits was a thing last season, Silas won't be making a comeback because of his job in the military. However, all that getting it on from last season must have paid off because the Coopers welcomed a baby boy in February. Congratulations. All I gotta say is season two looks like it's even more lit. Cheers to being black. (laughs) It does get a little dangerous sometimes, but it's still kind of lit though. And finally, well, here's what the word on the street is. Emmy Award-winning actor Quinta Brunson is not only a teacher on Abbott Elementary, she made her debut as a guest on Sesame Street with her new friend, Grover. Well, she was reminding us all how to breathe when the going gets tough. Take a look. Raise your wings above your head as you slowly breathe in. Then lower them as you slowly breathe out. How do you feel, Grover? As light as a butterfly. So remember to breathe when you're feeling overwhelmed. Share with me anything that catches your eye by using the hashtag DBL Erica Watch.
We'll be right back. Welcome back from the love boat to happy days to married with children. Ted McGinley has been a charming face in some of the greatest TV comedies of all time. And in his new show, The Baxters, he's bringing that charm to a family drama. Earlier, we spoke with him all about it. Take a look. The way he looked at Carrie is the same way that you always look at me. I thank God every day for giving me more time with you. Please welcome to the show, Ted McGinley. Yes. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, Appreciate thank it. you for being here. So let's get to it because, Ted, you've always been an incredible comedic actor. Yes. But a lot of the scenes in the Baxters are super serious. So are you still making people laugh between takes? Uh, I would say that's probably true on the Baxters <laughs> because we deal with a lot of very serious issues uh, that the in-between is important to make people still enjoy being in the space. So yeah, we had a great time making it. Uh, Roma Downey is an amazing partner to work with and boss, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, but we laughed all the time. Let's get to some of my favorite characters that you played. You played so many over the years, but Jefferson Darcy in Married with Children was hilarious. What was your trick to playing such a funny guy? It, it kind of just seems like that's who you are. Jefferson was uh, driven by the fact that he didn't want to do anything. <laughs> and so he couldn't wait to get Marcy out of the house, and then he had a separate life going on. But he would get Marcy out to work, and then Jefferson's life would come to life. Uh, so Jefferson was all about trying to not do anything. Uh, he's a bit of a gigolo. So uh, uh, there's a little bit of me in that. Yeah, how about him being physical? Because you're physically funny as well. Did you do a lot of your own stunts, stunts with Jefferson? I did, yeah. I, I, I mean, I always, uh, in everything I do, I like to try to do them. Uh, it's, it's kind of one of the fun pieces of the business. Uh, and as you get older, it's probably harder and harder to recover when you screw up. Uh, <laughs> But I still do enjoy doing it. The only stunts that he didn't do is when he fell off the roof. <laughs> Anytime you watch Married with Children, you saw a dummy come off the roof. If you watch the cast, if you watch the people, they would turn away from the camera to see it. But the mean, they were actually dying laughing. <laughs> and so they were hiding. That's funny. A little inside. Yeah. That's funny. Inside well played, though. Well played. Yeah. Don't be falling off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're known for being Stan Gable in Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> and you were an actual frat bro in real life. Yeah. So did this make things easier? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I knew the world very well. 
uh, when I stepped into it. And I would say I probably knew it as maybe better than anybody because I had just finished living it. Oh, wow. So, uh, and uh, it's one of those fantasies where you get to say all the things you don't get to say in real life. So that's fun. Like, it's the great... I would rather play a bad guy any day of my life or, or I, you know, I mean, I think that that's more my friends would tell you that's probably more of who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's more you than Jefferson. All right. Your first acting gig was actually in Happy Days when they brought you yeah. in as the nephew. Were you was it nervous days instead? Of, were you so nervous about being on such an iconic show? Yes. OK, it, yes. so we did it. We did it in front of a live audience. Oh, yeah. So all, it wasn't just, you know, I was now all of a sudden in front of a camera and working with people who who I remember running home from school from workouts in the evening so I could get home in time to see the show on television. Whoa. Now all of a sudden I'm standing there with them. That's and crazy. I have no train I don't I have no idea what I'm doing. So <laughs> my biggest fear was that I would walk out on stage and then I would just faint. <laughs> just and, collapse. And, and, Yes, and that was a real fear. Like, I'm not kidding. I was scared to death that I was just going to faint. Oh, wow. And I thought, well, if I do it once, they'll fire me. Henry Winkler was very generous to me. Poor Henry had to work opposite me. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, it was survival. He had to help me get through it. But he was generous. I learned it was like a great acting school mm. from some of the best actors in the world. It wow. was phenomenal. I'm loving all the behind the scenes stuff. That's my favorite. But something I never well, knew about I never knew about you, Ted. You were a model before you got into acting. You were actually in GQ. I think we got a picture right here. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. I so, love the fit. How did you? How did yeah. You, yeah how'd oh, you, my. That's yeah. some good stuff. So you're not, you weren't just a model. You were a mactor. You were a well, mactor yeah. right there. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. In the day when you made the transition, uh, and there weren't that many guys, I guess, making that transition at the time. But when I when I went from modeling to acting, and I only did it for like a year, I guess, year and a half. But when I made the transition, you stopped talking about it because you didn't want to be thought of as a model. <laughs> you had to be thought of as an actor. Now it's you can transition. You can go back. People are doing, they're doing it all, and and it it was. Uh, so now I, I keep thinking, I should get some of these pictures out there in the world. Mm. You know so what I never you. knew about that world, Al? Remember this look when you'd hold your inside of your yeah, sleeve you, you, and you'd look off? Who does that in real life? Why do we always do I, that for modeling? I, but I would like to see Ted do that move for us Can right now. Can we see now. you Could model maybe right now? let me just tell you, that move is actually gas. <laughs> yeah, <that's> gas. <laughs> I'm just saying, We're looking that? for work. <laughs> Ted, you've been a gas. Thank you so much. DVL Nation, do not miss The Baxters. It's premiering March 28th on Prime Video. Thank you so much again. We will be right Thank back. You, that Thank was you great. So Thank you so much. Soon, man. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.
Welcome back. You've heard the saying, move it or lose it. Well, what's on your feet could be slowing you down. According to research, the right shoe makes all the difference when it comes to your overall mobility and joint health. Experts say it's important to support your body as it's base. So when it comes to shoes, do you choose comfort over style? I, li I like to go to um, a company and run a little bit and they watch to see where my feet go, even though I probably won't be running again for many a moon. What are you, a division one? Athlete? I know, do but mean? I do do that and they, they get me a really good shoe. She's at the Red Bull studio. Yeah. Like. <laughs> LeBron is they there. They do that at Red Bull. Like yeah, they do that, but with their athletes. No. Right. Okay, and you Brooks too. Running shoes. Something that can help your joints, no matter <laughs> what type of shoe you wear, is Omega XL. It's a powerful joint support that's helped millions of consumers and is backed by 30 years of clinical research. Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. Call 800-630-5419 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. Speaking um, of uh, athletes, so where, where's the facility that you go to? I actually went to Brooks Running Shoes, and you can do an ASICS. Brooks, your husband. No, that happens to be the name of my husband. Brooks Running Shoes is, is the location? Yeah, and you where go it? Google it. in um, certain locations. Okay. It's near um, targets and things, but mm, they watch you, and you can see if you lean out to the right or left or if you're pigeon-toed, and it's important because they'll get you the right support. Now, I haven't put the sneakers on yet, but you once I bought them, them, I have the running them. test. I need to find a place to run. DB yeah. doesn't count. <laughs> yes. Every Find a day. Place. We'll be back Monday, same time, same place. Bye, guys. Running. <laughs>